How are you doing today? Today in this video, what I want to talk about is your fourth chakra. And what is your fourth chakra? Where is it located? You know, your fourth chakra is your heart center. You see, your heart was designed to love. And the less you allow your heart to love, the more your heart will suffer. And you know what? The number one cause of death in the U.S., and I think maybe through the whole world, is heart disease. You see, we come here to learn how to love. You know, I call life, the lessons of life, really uh, learning how to love 101. But it's a hard job because if our, the number one disease of death or the cause of death is heart disease, then are we truly working our hearts? Are we truly walking around with an open heart center? Hmm. So let me repeat that again. Your heart was designed to love. And the less you allow your heart to love, the more your heart will suffer, the more you will suffer. You see, the most powerful energy on the planet is love, and it's accessed through this fourth chakra. Now, so the, this is called your fourth chakra, your heart center. It's your center for love and compassion and forgiveness. It's represented in the color green, but also you can see it in the color pink. There's the green color. Oh, you can't see it. It's off the screen. Darn it. Back there. But it's, you know what it is? It's the middle chakra. So there's three below and three above, even though there's actually more chakras um, that aren't so commonly known. But that's just because our DNA is not activated. It's up to you as, um, as a personal project for you to really inform yourself and become aware of all of these chakras so that you can activate your DNA and free yourself. It's called soul liberation, which I believe we are in the great awakening and this is actually happening now. And nobody really has the answer because it's a very personal soul journey. But I'll tell you, your heart is super powerful and are you connected to it? Is your heart chakra open, balanced and free? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video today. So in the past videos, what I've been talking about are the first three chakras and you, and it's called the lower triangle and it's all these issues that we're working out. Hey, thanks for being here, everyone. Please make a comment. I want to know, do you feel like your heart center is open? Do you feel like it's balanced? And we're going to be getting into that in just a moment, but I'd love for you to make a comment. Let me know where you're, where you're listening in from. Um, but these issues of the lower triangle are all the issues of trauma and drama that play out in relationship. And so until we really are working these lower triangle issues, which I'll say in a moment, we won't have full access to the power of your heart. So what are these lower triangle issues? Feeling safe, especially financially, feeling safe in the world. That's the first chakra. The second chakra is, is your second uh, sex power and money chakra. How you navigate your sexuality and your intimate relationships and any relationships for that matter. Are you honoring yourself and the other? And then the third one is your self-esteem. The third chakra is your self-esteem and your sense of self-worth. So all of these are things that play out in relationship, feeling safe, honoring yourself and others in your sexual relationships, and having a sense of self-worth and that you matter. When you have all of that locked and loaded, hey, Helen, thanks so much for being here. I hope you've had a chance to try the uh, chakra meditation. I saw that you purchased it. So I did it this morning too. Once you learn, that's kind of like training wheels, that, that um, course that I created, the guided meditation. And, and you can use it as like just a little dessert of being guided through the meditate, the, the chakras. Um, oh, and from the UK. Awesome. It's sometimes I can see the comments. Sometimes I can't. Um, but then what you can do is you can use that guided meditation. And then once you understand it, you can do it on your own. Really boom, 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 boom. Clearing and cleansing all your, uh, all of your uh, chakras with the color therapy, it's really powerful. But let's get back to your heart center. Oh, and the lower triangle, you know, this idea of feeling safe, um, 
being, you know, being in balance with this whole power, sex and money stuff in relationship and how you navigate that. And then your sense of self-worth and self-esteem. When you've got those dialed in and you have healthy boundaries around that, you have a healthy sense of self-worth, you feel safe in the world, you have your finances together, you have a roof over your head, all these things, then you'll really be able to access the power of your heart. This is your fourth chakra, your middle chakra. And you know, the name of it, the Sanskrit name of it is Anahata. And so I've always related to the heart center because I'm a queen of hearts in the, in the destiny card system, but or love card system. And so love has been a powerful energy for me throughout my life. And I, I feel like I can express love a lot, but a lot of times I would give too much love and not get it in return. See, that is a weakened heart center. That's a heart center that's out of balance. Um, but anahata, what it actually means translated is unhurt, unstruck, and unbeaten. You know, it's like your heart is so powerful, but you come from a place of um, self-love as much as you come from a place of being able to love others. That's a powerful heart center. And so in that, when you have a strong heart center that you love yourself just as much as, as the love that you're giving to others, you're not doing it from victim. You're not doing it from codependency. You're not doing it because you, oh, he needs me or I can't live without him. You know, those kinds of things. You have a powerful sense of self. And so you have access and you know your own worth. And so now you love yourself and you give from a place of fullness. You don't give from a place of codependency. Um, what else did I want to say about that? And so really the heart center is about giving and receiving love in perfect balance and harmony. That's a powerful heart center. Now, the interesting thing is you will not have access to the power of your heart center without having a neutral mind. So your mind is going to get in the way of accessing the power of your heart. Not only the issues down here, but a too powerful of a mind is going to keep you from the power of your heart. Because guess what? A neutral mind will open your heart. You see, when you're not in judgment in your mind, when you're not overthinking, when you're not in your monkey mind, when you're in a neutral mind, that opens your heart. And so when you have access to your heart, then you can access its superpowers, which the superpowers of the heart are compassion, self-compassion and compassion for others, love, love for self and others in perfect balance and harmony. And the most powerful is forgiveness. We're going to get into that in just a moment. But let's look at some of the negative expressions of the heart center. Okay, so when you have negative expressions of the heart center, it means your heart is out of balance or it's shut down. And it may not even look that way. You know, my mother, she died uh, prematurely. She died at a young age. She died in her 70s. She died from lung cancer. And she had five kids and she gave and gave and gave a lot of herself. But she never gave to herself. I don't think she ever even had a full body massage. She used to go get pedicures. But I remember her telling me the only places where she had sanctuary was at her stove and in the back bathroom. I mean, my gosh, you know. So when I do healing work, sometimes I talk to my mother and I say, let's do this together. You see, when you heal, you heal generationally. They say nine or ten gener generations forward and ten generations back as well. So it's really important to access the power of your heart. So some of the negative expressions of, of um, your heart center when your heart center is imbalanced is, oh, and I want to mention with my mother dying of lung cancer, you know, that's all right there in the heart center. She had grief and wasn't able to let go and forgive. Maybe even lots of times it's just forgiving yourself. But let's talk about some of the negative expressions of the heart center. Blind loyalty. So being loyal to the wrong person could get you, you know, that's like codependency and losing yourself in relationship. That's an imbalanced heart. You're loving someone else more than you actually love yourself. And that's not even true love. 
Guilt is another expression of imbalanced heart center or hatred or revenge or rage or not being able to forgive someone, not being able to let go of someone who has trespassed on you. These are all negative expressions of the heart center. But what are positive expressions of the heart center? Positive expressions are situations like, you know, someone really upsets you, triggers you, but somehow you're able to navigate through those emotions and stay neutral or open to them. You don't completely shut them out. Now, you may have to boundary and say, you know, I can't see you. I need to really have space right now. Or you may even end the relationship for your good, but staying open, even though there's issues there. This is an open heart chakra. Also, another beautiful positive expression of an open heart center, or a strong heart center, is understanding that we are all connected. And I don't think a lot of people really understand that. Even in our political system, you know, it's the it's the us, uh, us and them consciousness. That is a shut down heart, let me tell you. So a neutral mind is an open heart. A uh, not, not an us and them type of consciousness is an open heart. And understanding that we are all connected is a positive expression of an open heart. What you do to others, you're actually doing to yourself. When you trespass on another, you're actually hurting yourself. The other thing that's a beautiful expression of an open heart is when you make mistakes, not beating yourself up. So if you mess up, which you're going to do because you're human, right? That you're not beating yourself up. You're saying, okay, you know, that's okay. I messed up. That's okay. You know, be gentle with yourself. And another beautiful positive expression of your heart center, a powerful heart center, is sweet inner dialogue. Sometimes in the morning when I wake up, I'll just give myself a hug. Say, oh, good morning. And then, um, you know, sweet inner dialogue. Okay, so let's try it, you guys. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. So rub your hands together. I want you to do this with me. Get some really good heat going. Take a nice, long, deep inhale. And then as you exhale, woo, put your hands on your heart. Whatever way feels most comfortable. Ooh, my heart is beating. Feel the warmth. You can close your eyes here for a moment. Close your eyes and feel the warmth of your hands on your heart. Smile down into your heart. Now, how, when was the last time you put your hands on your heart? When was the last time you smiled down into your heart? That's called the inner smile. It's a Taoist practice sending kind regard to your heart and sending kind regard to yourself. So repeat after me, smiling into your heart, feeling the warmth and connecting to your heart. Take a deep breath into your heart. And then say, I am perfect whole and complete, just the way I am. Feel how that feels. And let's do it another way. Say your name. So repeat after me again. Keep holding on to your heart. Say your name. I'm going to say Anathea, and you say your name. You are perfect, whole, and complete just the way you are. How does that feel? It should feel really, really good. So keep your hands on your heart right now with me. Let's just stay here in the juiciness of your heart. These are all beautiful, beautiful, positive expressions of your heart center. Oh my gosh, I could just feel the energy. It's like really centered me and really calmed me. So the other really beautiful, positive expression of your heart center is the ability to heal. I couldn't even feel your energy there. I'm such an empath. Oh, it's so beautiful. So your heart the other superpower that it has is the ability to heal. Heal your relationship with yourself. Heal your relationship with others. And heal maybe imbalances that you're experiencing 
in your body. So stay with your heart center. And I want you to know that the lesson that you're here to learn regarding your fourth chakra, your heart chakra, anahata, the unhurt, the unwounded part of you that you have access to, is to really learn the lesson that of divine love, the healing power of divine love. You know, when you aren't able to forgive, the only person that you're hurting is yourself. So who have you not forgiven? Who has trespassed upon you? Can you forgive them? Let me give you, now hold on to your heart. Let me give you the six or seven steps for forgiveness. The first step is simply to acknowledge. Often we want to say, oh, that person, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But it's really eating us up inside. Sometimes we're not even conscious of it. And it affects our future relationships and our inability to open our heart. So that's why forgiveness is so important. So step one is to acknowledge, wow, I really got hurt. I need to forgive or, or I'm, I'm really unable to forgive. So acknowledging that. And then number two, the step two is to consider, once you've acknowledged, then consider how has me not being able to let go and move on or let go and forgive this person for what they did, how is that affecting me today? And how is that affecting me with my current interaction with them or my belief of what the, who they are, whether they're in your life or not any longer? So really considering it, how it has hurt you personally. And then step three is to accept it. Like, oh, I'm goddess. I really got damaged through that. Or, oh my gosh, that really happened. Or, oh my gosh, that's part of my past and I cannot change that. So really accepting it. And then step number four is to ask yourself, with all of that awareness, am I now really ready and willing to forgive? Because that will determine your, the future of your relationship with that person. Whether they're in your life or not, they're still in your heart. So asking yourself, am I ready, willing, and able to do the forgiveness work? And then uh, five is to repair. Be willing to repair. So that's if you're currently with the relationship or just, just even passively in your own mind, within yourself repairing and forgetting, forgiving them. Opono ono is a way of forgiveness. Um, I won't go into that, but basically it, you say something like, uh, I think the mantra is, uh, um, I love you, please forgive me, thank you. And there's one more thing you say. You may be familiar with opono ono, I think is how you pronounce it. I've used that a lot. So you put them in your mind's eye and you let them know, I forgive you, I love you, thank you. Thank you for the experience and I let you go. Something like that. And then um, through that step, step six is that you learn how to have closure. And step seven is you have forgiven. So that's the process. Acknowledge that you really need to forgive. Consider how it is currently affecting you by not forgiving. Um, accept what happened. Ask yourself, am I ready to forgive? Repair it and then learn um, how to find closure through really doing that forgiveness process and then you're there, you've forgiven. And you may have to repeat this in phases through your life because we do hurt each other often and that's how we learn. And you know what? We learn through cultivating self-love. I wanna tell you this before I, before I get off. I've been through hell and back in relationships. And it was not this relationship, but the previous one before that, where I really realized the way that it ended, I was in such tragic um, loss that it, I had such a visceral feeling through my body and I had already gone through other losses. And this was the ultimate like 
whoa, realization. And this was not a mental, an intellectual process. This was a visceral embodiment experience that I realized that the only way I was gonna survive and get through this without dying from pain and hurt was to love myself, was to really cultivate that. And so I really learned on a visceral level that love is not out there. Love is here. And once you really get that and you cultivate that from within yourself, you're going to learn how to love unconditionally. You're going to learn how to accept people the way that they are. But you're going to be able to do it in a, in a way that's really honoring yourself and from a place of fullness. So I want to leave you with that. And I want to leave you with some reflections. How much are you able to truly love unconditionally others? And how much do you love yourself? Is there somebody in your life that has trespassed upon you, that has really, really hurt you? Are you still holding on to that pain? Because the only one that's hurting is you. And are you willing to forgive them? If you are, you'll be free. You'll be free. And you'll be able to access the true power of your heart. So I hope this was helpful. I have a couple of things that I'd like to, you to do. Please do comment. If you'd enjoyed this video, please share it on your timeline. The other thing is in the description, there's two links. The first link is a, um, the article that goes along with the fourth chakra. And so you'll be able to see there's gems, the right gems for the heart chakra. Um, and then the other articles to the other chakras as well. So click on that article if you want to read about the chakras, the heart chakra and other chakras. And then the other thing is, click on the other link. I did a course, which is a guided meditation. There's actually two, two guided meditations in there. It's powerful. If you do nothing but go to that link and go check out the landing page, you're going to get color therapy. You know, colors really affect us. But if you do get the uh, guided meditation, you can use the coupon code chakras and then it'll only be ten dollars but what i do is i take you through a beautiful guided meditation about 18 minutes and it shows you in your mind's eye you visualize the colors of each of the chakras and so i take you through this beautiful color therapy experience and it's like kind of like training wheels you can use it again and again as far as often as you want but once you actually learn how to do it you can quickly do it yourself and you get this beautiful healing. So check out those links, make a comment, share this video. I appreciate you being here because it's really fun to share this information with you. Next week, what I'm going to be talking about is the throat chakra. This is going to be another powerful video. This is important information because we are now currently in the great awakening. We can buy into all the fear that's happening out there, or we can access our true fat power. And whoa, I can feel the warmth of my heart by having my hands on my heart center. So I hope you shared that and were, you were doing that with me. We're here to come alive. We're here to claim our personal power, but it's only up to you. You can only discover that path. I am here to help you in that journey. So check out those links and I'll see you next time where we're going to be talking about the throat chakra, aligning your will with divine will and learning how to unequivocally with love speak your truth. All right. Thanks for being here. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.